Pastor, a uh, question. Uh, I want to paint a scenario. As a pastor that's establishing a work, um, hypothetical situation. Yes, sir. Member, sister, we have a member that we always call Sister Cucumber. <laughs> sister Cucumber, Cucumber uh, becomes rebellious toward the ministry. When you are in a, when you've been set in a church that has uh, already been established and has been operational for years, Sister Cucumber comes along with, and she begins to become confrontational. There are certain levels that you begin to discipline her. Mm -hmm. Talk to us about that struggle when you, you establish the church. You only have yourself, your wife. Uh, I often say uh, Progressive Harvest. Uh, we started the ministry with my wife, myself, and my daughters, and, and they don't count because they will sleep half the time. But <laughs> when you only have the two or three, uh, it, it becomes a little more of a challenge to get on Sister Cucumber when she is now the only or the main tither, yeah. the uh, fundraising person. She's the one that's doing everything. Do we not have a tendency to be a little more lenient and have different decisions when we're small and beginning as opposed to stepping into something? Uh, Bishop, that's a very good question. I would, the answer for that is not a, a, a yes or no answer. Let me say it like that. Okay. Um, I would say that there is a standard in which I like about establishing a church. There is a standard that you come in the door with versus the 179 year old church that has already let stuff get out of control. Okay. When we, when we, bec when we become or um, put on the role of that establishment chariot, uh, we come in the door saying, setting certain, certain, certain standards. Okay. Um, Sister Cucumber has a tendency because she is the only adult she has a tendency to think that she can do what she want to do. Okay. But I believe that it is easier for us to deal with that because we are already setting a standard. I believe that we are dealing with that at the beginning, not 179 years down the road. Right. Once we deal with it now, mm -hmm. we can now, it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a struggle with <laughs> Sister Cucumber because Sister Cucumber came in a dough hard headed. Uh -huh. But again, that's what I like about establishing a church. Mm -hmm. I like getting someone, I can deal with someone who is hard-headed mm -hmm. that don't know church. Right. Because I can, I, you know, and when I say I, you understand what right, I'm saying? I understand. I can, I can begin to show them and, mm -hmm. and, and, and we can teach them how they should go. But somebody who's already been in church for 20 years, mm -hmm. they're not gonna wanna receive the criticism Right. that Sister Cucumber is going to receive right. in an already established right. church. Well, Pastor, what about, um, I often say that uh, I remember starting the church and now the Lord has blessed uh, Progressive Harvest to where, you know, Sunday mornings we very nice crowds and, you know, um, we look up and we'll have full capacity and the Lord is blessing. But I remember back in 1998, June the 14th to be exact, 1998, mm -hmm. 4 o'clock p.m. <laughs> at uh, <laughs> 1011 Orange Street in Henderson. Uh, that Sunday we started service and I wore a lot of hats that Sunday. Mm -hmm. I was the pastor, I was the worship leader, I was a, a piano player, uh -huh. I was the drummer because I, you know, uh -huh. <laughs> I had uh -huh. the beat with the leg, I was the head custodian, I was the chairman of the deacon board. I was the head usher. <laughs> you know, I was the usher. I wasn't, you, I wasn't you an usher. I was an usher. Uh -huh, I an usher. Of, uh, <laughs> as ministry grows, the need to wear the hats diminishes. Right. It is difficult for a leader to start removing hats right. and giving that. Why do you think it's difficult for us to? The difficulty is because we've already trained ourselves to do everything. Mm -hmm. uh, we've already gotten, and, and this could be a hindrance in ministry, because we, we get a mindset of, well, I don't need you to do this. Right. Uh, and so I believe that is the difficulty in, uh, because I'm in that stage now.
okay. having to relinquish this and having to relinquish that, having to relinquish certain authority over here, not authority, but you understand what I'm saying? Uh, I have to relinquish this certain, uh, this certain job to this person. Mm -hmm. And it's difficult, it's difficult for me, and, and I find myself almost micromanaging, <laughs> you know. Is it trust? Trust could be an issue. Trust very well could be an issue. Uh, because we look at, we have a tendency to look at the church as, this my baby. This my baby. And I can't let nobody <laughs> hurt my baby. My, well, I remember I often use this illustration that when I moved into my first apartment, uh, grew up with mom, grew up you know, in the house. When I got my first apartment, the first thing I did was I grabbed a, I went in the bathroom and I took a rag and I took that rag and I put it under the pipe under the sink. Mm -hmm. Now, I didn't know why I did it. I just knew that mama had a rag in the sink, in the bathroom under the sink. I didn't realize that it was for cleaning purposes okay. so that you always have a, a rag there, but I just knew mama did it that way. And so when I got my first apartment, the first thing I did was went in there and put that rag under there. Uh, the reason I said that, my question is, how often do we in ministry put a rag under the sink when we begin to establish ministry. And what I mean by that is because it's been done by our pastor, yeah, we right. grew up in church and we've always seen it done like this. The moment we begin to establish something, we immediately put the rag under the sink. Uh, I, I think that we have, we as pastors, especially pastors that started the church, we have a, a, a tendency to do that quite often. Uh, I heard a, a pastor, Pastor Philip Betts, I'm, he said something that was so great. He said, if you don't know what to do, you do what you know. That's right. Uh, and so uh, there's a story, Bishop, that, that goes along with that. Uh, the story says that there was a, a young girl that was watching her mother uh, cook. Mm -hmm. And when her mother was cooking, she noticed that the mother would take the handle and break it off of the pan mm -hmm. and then put the pan into the oven, uh -huh. and you know the story. Yeah, I heard you. Okay, so uh, so so the, the 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 daughter asked the mother, mother, why why did you break the pan? She said, Well, uh, I break the pan, I break the the handle off the pan because that's what my mother did. Mm -hmm. So the young girl goes and asks her grandmother, uh, grandmother, why did you break the pan off of the? Why do you break mm -hmm. the handle off the pan? Grandmother says, I do it because I saw my mother do it. Mm -hmm. So she goes and asks her great grandmother. Why did you break the handle off the pan? She said, well, the reason that I broke the handle off the pan is because my oven used to be small and it couldn't fit in there. <laughs> and so we have a tendency to start doing things right. and we don't even know no, why we're, we're doing them. Excellent. Uh, and I believe that that is the part, that is the growth process that God begins to develop in us as those that have established churches. Mm -hmm. I believe that's why he's calling so many pastors to establish churches because I gotta get, he, this is what he's saying, I gotta get you out of the mindset of just doing and not knowing why you're why doing. You doing it. Yeah, I, that was beautiful. I heard, uh, I heard it similar, it was with uh, the, the mother would cut half of the ham off and throw <laughs> that away and the daughter end up doing it and she said why are you wasting the ham she said i did it because the pan wasn't big enough to put the ham in so we and you know going back to with the rag under the sink pastor you know it is sort of in my mind is geared toward tradition right there's nothing wrong with tradition their tradition has its place. That's right. And we, we learn from tradition, but maybe in 2009, there is a better way of cleaning the bathroom That's right. than having a rag under the sink. That's right. That's, That's right. That's carrying mm -hmm. germs and all of these things that from clean and sticking it. That's maybe right. Maybe there's something else. And so we need to look at, um, I heard my pastor growing up used to say, always be anchored to the rock, but be geared to the times. Mm. And so uh, that being said, there are, and, and we're just scratching the surface of some of the challenges that comes along with starting ministry. Right. Uh, we haven't gotten into the financial part of it. Well, let's get into it.